Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Now, when it comes to the power of social media on politics, one man wrote the book, and that is my guest this morning, Joe Trippi. Now, to give you a little background on him, he has ran presidential campaigns for Ted Kennedy, John Edwards, Howard Dean, and that is just to name a few. I'll be talking more about the Howard Dean campaign later on in today's show. This man has had so much power on politics. He pioneered the technology that Obama used in 2008 to capture the White House. He's been on the cover of the New Republic as the man who reinvented campaigning. Now, fortunately for us, he's been spending some time here in the Keys. I know He'd like a little bit more relaxation, but his work never stops. Joe, it's a pleasure having you here with me this morning. Good to be with you, Jenna. Now, how do you like Key West, Joe? Love it. Been coming here uh, every winter for, uh, gosh, well well over a decade, uh, probably two decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, can't think of a better place to spend, uh, particularly with a blizzard going on up uh, up north where I live. Uh, it, it's, uh, I'm glad I was down here. Yeah. When are you buying a house? Are you going to do that soon here in the Keys? <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure. Well, no yeah, pressure. We, we keep looking every time we come down, but we just never quite pull the trigger. Okay. Well, Joe, let's just get right in to your background. It's so impressive. I've been doing some research on you, but the first thing I want to note right yes. now is that you are a Fox News analyst, but yet you're a Democratic strategist. Right. So how did you get the connection with Fox? Uh, well, I, you know, I've done so many different campaigns, not just presidential, Jerry Brown's campaign for governor in uh, California in 2010. And along the way, uh, I've been an MSNBC analyst, mm -hmm. an analyst for CBS, and uh, and right now, uh, at last two or three years, have been uh, uh, working as an analyst for Fox, ten mostly on national issues and and presidential politics. Like in the last 2012, I didn't work for Obama in 2012. I I commented on what I thought was going on between him and Mitt Romney and Democrats and Republicans, along with the and they have they've people from both parties and uh, other analysts and journalists who who kind of help frame um, you know the information flow to tell people you know what they think is going on mm -hmm. um, I turned out I was right <laughs> good <laughs> I, predi you know, I predicted Obama would win with a, with 303 electoral votes and if I was if his model was right it'd be he'd win Florida too and that would take it to 332 uh, but I didn't quite have the guts to call Florida, so I, I was right about 98% of it, but didn't call Florida beforehand. Okay, well then you still have your job, right? But yeah, well, right. Ho <laughs> hopefully, for free. <laughs> at least this year, yes. Okay. Now, Joe, when did your political career begin? Uh, 1979. Uh, well, probably mid-70s, probably... Uh, doing local city council races in San Jose, California. That's where I was, I was going to San Jose State University in Silicon Valley at the time. Um, and so, but by 79, I was already, had moved nationally, was, had worked, uh, gone to work for Senator Kennedy um, out in Iowa for his presidential campaign in, I think it was November or December of 1979. So pretty much 1980 was when I went, it became sort of a, a national uh, political uh, organizer uh, and never really went back to California. I mean, I, I, I worked for Jerry Brown's campaign for governor in mm -hmm. 2010. I do do campaigns there, but I've been pretty much in Washington and, and um, working in national politics for, for most of that time since 1980. It's a long time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you always know you wanted to do politics then, Joe? No, no, not at all. I was an aeronautical engineering major in, in uh, college and uh, decided I didn't really need to know what lift drag coefficients were and uh, fell in love with politics and uh, never really, I can't think of anything I've really done with my aeronautical engineering major. Mm -hmm. So the major, it just, it sits in that degree on the shelf, right? Yeah. No, I never got it. I, I left college before oh. to, to go work for Kennedy before with like seven units short. Okay. So I never, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dropout. I never, I never completed college. Well, you've done uh, very, very well for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be talking much more about I don't your like background. to advise people. Stay yeah. in college. Yeah. Finish. <laughs> yeah, you're not given the advice yeah, 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 to do yeah, that, yeah. But, but you definitely, you've had a very fortunate career. You've been very Thank successful. You. So we're going to take a quick break right now, but we'll be talking much more when we return from these messages. Stay with us.
Joe, I mentioned in our introduction that you were on the cover of The New Republic as the man who reinvented campaigning, and that really took place during the Howard Dean campaign. How did it all come, come about, though, that you saw the power of the Internet? Well, I gr grew up in Silicon Valley, I mean, in terms of college, aeronautical engineering, so I, and I had sort of always straddled politics and technology uh, mm -hmm. when I was studying and things. And so I guess by 2004, I was... There are a lot of people in politics who don't understand anything about technology, and there are a lot of people in technology in Silicon Valley who don't understand anything about politics. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess, understood enough about both places by 2004 that I was dangerous, <laughs> 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 that, it, that something crazy was going to happen. So right. we ended up, it, you know, what happened was the, it was the Dean campaign. I, I finally got a chance to run a campaign. They, most of the other presidential campaigns, I'd run a state, or uh, you know was the field director or an organizer but by 2004 I was actually got the chance to run one and I'd always had this fantasy of running one using technology to pull people together and empower them to to sort of be the messengers for the candidate and uh, it 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 kind of worked I mean we went from dead last to to front runner status before we we, we fell apart uh, but it also I think provided some of the launch pad for Barack Obama's camp. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they, they followed a lot of the same techniques and, and uh, strategy that uh, tactics that we did in the, uh, in the Dean campaign. And most of the, a lot of the people in the so, who worked the social media and internet part of the campaign forum were people who had worked in the Dean campaign that worked under me. We, uh, we invented it all together. And mm -hmm. then they went on and, uh, and helped uh, uh, Obama in 2008. Some of them were s still there in 2012. So right. uh, I think, uh, I don't know if I reinvented campaigning or not, but I'm, I sure think uh, uh, since that campaign, politics really has changed. And the way the internet and social media does empower people to uh, take part in, in politics, we're seeing it on both sides now in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we had a good head start because of the Dean campaign on, on my side of the aisle. Absolutely. Now, how much has even new media, social media, changed since you saw it in 2004? Oh, I mean, everything's changed. I mean, 2004, when we were running the Dean campaign, we had uh, uh, Facebook was on a college campus or two. Mm -hmm. Twitter didn't exist. The iPhone uh, wasn't uh, launched until 2007, uh, about a year before Obama. I mean, so we had none. Smartphones didn't exist. None of the YouTube YouTube did not exist in 2004. Uh, people didn't have broadband. They weren't watching TV shows over the internet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now people can watch your channel over the over, over the net if they want. Mm -hmm. um, I can come down here um, and actually be on the air for Fox mm -hmm. by because of the technology that's changed be, just between 2004 and today. Mm -hmm. um, and so you you know, it, so it's really interesting how it's all changed. Now that The problem is trying to predict where it'll be four years from now. I mean, yeah. you, that's, uh, that when, if you'd asked me in 2004, the day the Dean campaign was over, what's 2008 going to look like? Will I am doing a video that millions of Americans watched um, the Yes I Can, Yes We Can vi video that uh, for Obama that he created? That wouldn't have been possible in 2004. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure I would, as somebody who had helped pioneer it, I'm not sure I would have been able to see that that's how big a shift in that small amount of time. Um, so no, it's, it's a, it's, that's the, the thing I think, as much as we're sort of stunned with the power of the Obama campaign and what they were able to do in 2008 and 2012, I think by 2016 somebody's going to make that look like mm -hmm. a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, just like the Obama 2012 campaign makes the Dean campaign, we were the big pioneers, mm -hmm. we were the Wright brothers in a little rubber band uh, for a motor, uh, 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 you, you know, twigs for an uh, airplane. Uh, they launched a, a guy into the White House uh, just four years later. So it, I think you're going to see that same kind of, they're, they're going to look like the guys doing it with a one prop uh, rubber band mm -hmm. uh, for four to eight years from now. Somebody's going to have harnessed all this in a way that we wouldn't have imagined and become president of the United States. Might be Hillary Clinton, might be Marco Rubio, but one of, somebody um, I think it will take it to the, even to the next step. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you say that Republicans and Democrats differ in their use of social networks? 
Well, I think two problems. The Democrat, we, we were out uh, when George Bush was president, so in a lot of the big money wasn't with us. Um, I, one of the reasons the Dean campaign went to the internet was because no one was going to give us a dime. None of the big money people were. So out of necessity, we developed this new, you know, trying to get a bunch of people give us $5 or $10. Uh, and then, uh, and the Republicans just didn't need to do that. George Bush had pioneers and rangers raising him hundreds of thousands of dollars, writing the big checks. And that worked great, except it put them way behind um, in this new technology. Uh, they're now eight, 12 years behind the Democrats. We only went there out of necessity. It wasn't because uh, we were like more brilliant or visionary. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to, you know, pound, oh yeah, we, <laughs> but I mean, we went there because we had to, mm -hmm. uh, and it worked. And then, uh, but the Republicans tended to ignore it because, and even the Clintons did in 2008. They, they knew how to elect a president. They had done it in 92 and 96. So they mm -hmm. didn't see the need to do what Howard Dean did or to pay a whole lot of attention to what Barack Obama, a state senator a couple years, you know, earlier mm -hmm. had, was doing on this internet. It's a mm -hmm. fad thing. Mm -hmm. And it, well, no, people got religion after, um, after Obama defeated Hillary Clinton in 2008. I think both uh, she did. Uh, she really understood social media as Secretary of State, but also the Republicans started to think maybe we need to, to do something there, although they still didn't really uh, jump on it the way I, I would have if I were them, and I think they're very far behind uh, the Democratic Party and maybe behind for many years. I mean, Barnes & Noble never really did catch Amazon.com. and. Uh, I think that's sort of what's going on here. The Democrats right now are Amazon.com, and the and the Republican Party is sort of still in uh, bricks and mortar bookstores, um, and haven't even launched the Nook yet. Mm -hmm. So I, I I mean I think we'll see how that plays out, but it hasn't worked for them the last uh, last few elections. Very true. They need to get it together for yeah. 2016. Yes. All right, we're going to be talking more, Joe. We're going to take a quick break right now, so don't go away. There's much more to come. Joe, I want to talk with you for a few minutes about a book that you wrote called The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Tell us about this book. Well, it's basically it, it sort of the, uh, the Dean campaign, and it's about all, this thing, all these things that changed. I mean, how the Internet, how we took on the establishment of the Democratic Party, um, how we got clobbered by it <laughs> at the, towards the end of the campaign. Uh, when they really, you know, when they realized they had to kill us, or or we were gonna, you know, or we were gonna upturn the the party, but it, overturn the party. But a lot of what I said, I mean, the subtitle of that book was "Democracy, the Internet, and the Overthrow of Everything," um, and I meant it at the time. And now you see what happens in the Arab Spring. I mean, it was all this has been fueled by this uh, capacity for the bottom um, uh, using social media to communicate with it with each other and. And uh, you know, demand change if it's in a country where there's a tyrant or a dictator, um, or um, like I said, with the Clintons thought they had a lock on the Democratic Party. They, the, by all rights, they did. She was the first lady. He was the president. It turned out, no, some okay. guy from Chicago with a funny name became yeah. president. So, okay. it, it a lot of the things that I wrote in that book, and you know, I re rewrote parts of it for later editions that came out at that in, sort of included Obama's uh, ascendancy in, in it. Um, uh, but a lot of what I wrote turned out to come, come true. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, and I still think we're just at the infant stages of this. I mean, journalism's changing, the way TV works is changing. I mean, a few years from now, I'm not sure we'll know whether you're watching it on a TV or, or, or your cell phone. I mean, right. is it television or is it the internet? I mean, we'll, uh, so everything, it's, it's very disruptive, it's changing our politics, it's changing the institutions of the country, it's changing um, even, like I said, things like journalism and, and clearly uh, the top, uh, particularly uh, governments uh, in the Middle East and elsewhere are having trouble dealing with the fact that the people have that kind of power to communicate with each other. Um, and that's going to change too. Uh, so the same old, same old is not going to work much uh, as, as well uh, for them as they, as they 
hoped they could by just holding on to power. So I think everything's going to change, mm -hmm. and I think, um, and I think the Republican Party will change. I mean, it's, I mean, even our party institutions, both parties, will be changed because there'll be a deeper connection with the rank and file, with people on the street, mm -hmm. in terms of what they they want their party to be about. And uh, I think we're also seeing that in the Republican Party, uh, some of the fighting that's that's going on. Um, a lot of the people at the top can't control, can't shut down, um, and just make people follow them as much as uh, they could in the past. So, uh, and the Democrats sort of avoided all that because of Obama. But I think the Republicans are. It's going to be very interesting. I'm really. Mm -hmm. uh, interested in seeing how this all plays out. Yeah, it's very, very hard to predict, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, let's talk about Howard Dean for just a moment. Do you think there's any chance of him ever running for president again? Uh, he's a young guy uh, in relative terms. I mean, for people who run for president, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked, but I just don't see it. I don't think he'll do it, but, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we could all wake <laughs> up and find out he's, he, he's going to run. I, I just, uh, I've never heard him talk about it again, I mean mm -hmm. about going again, uh, but he's cr obviously he's been very active and, uh, and is out there and very outspoken, so it wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if under if the right circumstances, I mean if he thought the party establishment wasn't, you know, was not listening uh, mm -hmm. to the grassroots, uh, yeah I could see him, uh, it, but it'd have to be something like that, I think mm -hmm. it'd have to be him thinking there's no one else that's uh, going to take a stand against the establishment if he thought they were going down the wrong direction like some which is what happened before if the entire most of the democratic establishment was for the war in Iraq in 2004 the reason he ran or one of the big reasons he ran one of the big reasons I worked for him um, was because he was one of the only candidates running on our side that was opposed to the war in Iraq um, and I think the reason we all did it was to stop was again if there been other candidates, if the entire party advanced against the war in Iraq, I'm not sure we would have run or the Dean campaign even would have happened. But mm -hmm. uh, So I, yeah, I think if there's something like that, some inequity or something, he might, but I don't think he's not angling for it. He's right. not doesn't spend every minute thinking about how he's going to run for president. <laughs> right. That's not Howard Dean. Okay. Now, would you be his campaign manager if he ran? No. <laughs> you wouldn't do it wanna, again. I don't want to be enough. anybody's <laughs> campaign manager. I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mind being some sage, uh, gray-haired advisor to, <laughs> you know, that can show up every once in a while, right on mm -hmm. the plane with the candidate. But I'm not. I, I'm, I'm like getting up. It's a young man's game, young person's mm -hmm. game, and mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, I, I can't say that I don't love it. I'm mm -hmm. just saying I just don't, it, but man, it, it takes so much out of you. It really does. I've probably taken 20 years off my, <laughs> my life by doing all those uh, presidential campaigns. I can imagine. Actually, I can't even imagine everything you went through, but you look great, so you, you survived it. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> all right, we're going to take a quick break right now, but we'll be right back after these messages, so don't go away. All right, Joe, you said no more presidential campaigns are really in your future right now. What's up ahead, though, for you? Uh, well, I've been, uh, you know, I do work in campaigns. I do work for congressional candidates and gubernatorial candidates. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and I do the Fox News uh, contributor uh, analyst kind of role, uh, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy a lot. Uh, so I think uh, those, you know, concentrate on those two things. And... Um, mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, get to retire at some point <laughs> a few a few years down the road. Mm -hmm. Now, do you miss all the craziness that went on though, Joe, during all the presidential campaigns and all the other big campaigns that you've you've really mastered? I thought I was good. I I, I went to all th all the debates this year mm -hmm. as an analyst for Fox, and um, it was really weird being on this side of the camera, uh, you know, commenting on it instead of being in the fray. Uh, on the other hand, um, I didn't miss the pit in my stomach of, of being on the other side, you know, watching my candidate and like wishing I could dive in front of the microphone when he was saying something that was uh, wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Versus being on this side, being able to go like, <laughs> being able to sort of go on the, you know, point out the mistakes a little bit. So I, it was, it's taken a lot of getting used to. Mm -hmm. um, but I also find I got, that there's some insights that are valuable. I mean, that I've been being on the other side of that camera, understanding what it's really like. People, you know, to be part of 
that anal you know analytical ability to give that to people let them know what it, what it felt like what it's really like on the other you know uh, for those operatives and for the campaign candidates I found pretty rewarding I had a lot of fun doing it but it was totally different feeling <laughs> and completely different yeah probably a relaxing feeling yeah, so, like you so said <laughs> it was a lot more relaxed yeah. and can you give us any insight into the 2016 election do you think Hillary Clinton will be running Joe I hope she does I think I think uh, and I think she probably will I find it hard to believe that after all she's accomplished uh, to be literally at the point where she could be the first woman to be president of the United States um, I, I, you know, I think after she gets uh, takes a break from uh, all that she's done here, uh, I would be stunned to see her not 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 run. And I do think she'd be the odds-on favorite within the Democratic Party. And uh, we'll see who the Republicans would put up against her. She's going to have to fight for it. But I think I think if she runs, I think she wins the nomination. Okay. Now, when are we going to see you back in Key West, Joe? Next winter, for sure. <laughs> Next and this, winter. And this, your, your, your studio, your, your station makes it so easy. I mean, I used to have to go, I'd come down here for vacation, and the Fox would call me up, and I'd have to go to Miami, drive up to Miami to, to do my Fox uh, uh, an analyst or commentary. Um, and, uh, you know, it wipes out a whole day of your vacation to do that, two or three hours up and back, you mm -hmm. know, six hours. So... Uh, this year, it's just been a breeze uh, mm -hmm. coming in here and uh, working with uh, wonderful people here at the at the station. And uh, and I think I've done six or seven mm -hmm. uh, Fox spots uh, mm -hmm. for the news and uh, for a special report and uh, the Megyn Kelly show. I'm uh, Megyn Kelly uh, happening now and some of the other shows. So it, it's been great, and it's only like a half hour zip over. Right. Uh, and and uh, and I'll, uh, and then do my uh, commentary and zip mm -hmm. uh, and zip back to the to the beach so mm -hmm. uh, or the bar. <laughs> well, Which not way? back to the bar. I don't think we can go on it. But uh, but uh, no. So it's been great. Really Good. been great. Well, we've enjoyed having you in the studio, and it's been fun watching you from the studio on then the television on Fox News. You do so good, Joe. Well, thank so you very much. Thank you for taking the time today, talking with our viewers about what you have up ahead and gave us some predictions too for 2016 so thank thanks you. great to be with you Jenna thank you everybody for tuning in this morning I hope you can join me again tomorrow at 7 a.m. and back at 8 30 a.m. take care everybody and have a great rest of your day and now we're supposed to it'll be okay